Greetings and welcome to Faith Moments with Dina Marie, a weekly podcast where we proclaim and ponder our Sunday Mass readings. We are into the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time on this day, August 11th, which Sunday falls. It's also the Feast of St. Clair. And so I want to particularly recognize my Franciscan friends and the poor Clares around the globe. Happy Feast Day. It's my grandmother's birthday. May she rest in peace. And it is my brother-in-law and sister-in-law's wedding anniversary on St. Clair's Feast Day. So it's a very special day and we get some pretty powerful readings. And one of the things that strikes me as we hear a little bit more about the prophet Elijah today, and we continue, as I've mentioned, we're going to hear a couple more weeks of the Bread of Life discourse from the Gospel of John. I really think we are going on mission. And the focus today really resonates in my heart on mission. You're being on mission, you're being called to go on mission, and you're being fed to fulfill your mission with Jesus Christ. So as we unpack these these scriptures today, keep your mission in mind as you listen to the readings. Let's begin today with a collect prayer for this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And when I talk about that mission, being on mission, that's it, to enter into the inheritance which you've promised as adopted sons and daughters, as beloved sons and daughters of the Father, of the Heavenly Father, of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are preparing to fully embrace that adoption, that life. And we have to live through life in order to get there. And St. Paul gives us some words of wisdom always in how to live that life. And we learn from the lessons of scripture and through the church. And we're going to learn through the lesson of uh, one of the prophets today as we get into our readings. So let's begin our readings on this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again, but the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked forty days and forty nights to the mountain of God, Oreb. The Word of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the afflicted man called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. 
Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you, along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen. I say to you, whoever believes, has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Powerful messages from the book of Kings, from Ephesians, and of course, as we follow this discourse in Gospel of John chapter 6. And again, just, just looking quickly at Paul we can learn so much about how to live. And this week we learn how not to live. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit, Paul says. Don't have bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, reviling, malice. These must be removed from you. You know, there's something like a righteous anger that causes us to fight for justice and to ensure the rights of all men and women right? But this shouting and bitterness, this way of life that is uneasy and really reflects not a trust in God. It really reflects that you want to be in control. And since you're not in control, there's this shouting and reviling so you can get control. And that is a lack of trust in God, our father. And Paul says to be kind, to be compassionate, to be forgiving as God has forgiven you. Is there somebody in your heart today? And they may be living, they may be deceased. Is there somebody who you still haven't forgiven? Or maybe you said you forgave them, but there's still this burden in your heart about a person, about a situation, maybe in your childhood, maybe in a high school age, maybe in college, maybe as an adult, there's still somebody that it nags on you. Forgive that person, forgive them, let that go, pray for them, pray for their soul and release that harboring that you have. I want to go to the, see if I can get this here. I want to go to the book of Kings and I, I love the story of Elijah and what we have to remember again, 
we have to look at the readings in context. What's happening in these readings? And so we hear about Elijah and he he sounds pretty distraught. And if we read ahead, we would have seen that he had just killed all of the priests of Baal. And now uh, Jezebel and Ahab are after him. They are after him because Elijah is standing up for the true worship of God, the true worship of the true God. And now he's fighting for his life. He's fleeing for his life. And, you know, he says, enough, Lord, you know, take me away, <laughs> take me away because he fears for his life. And so he falls asleep under a broom tree and the angel of the Lord you know, God provides him food as he's escaping this potential execution. And look how God provides for him. The angel comes, get up, get up and eat, take and eat. And wouldn't we like that? You know, a hearth cake and a jug of water in our time of need. But you know what? God does provide what we need at the time we need it, when we're following his will, when we're doing what he calls us to do, even if it's hard, even if everybody else around you is is persecuting you, as was the case with Elijah, he did fear for his own life. And yet he listened to the angel. He did follow the instructions of the Lord. I think about Joseph with the dream of the angel who tells St. Joseph to get up and flee, take your wife, take your child to safety, to take your wife into your home. You know, God gives us messengers in different ways. And for Elijah here, we see the messenger of the angel. He eats the food and he walks and it sustains him for 40 days and 40 nights. You know, 40 days and 40 nights. We hear a lot about 40s in the scriptures. And what happens after that encounter, which is what we hear today in first Kings, he comes Elijah to a cave and then he hears the Lord. See, he's been fed by the Lord through the angel. He goes on a journey for 40 days and 40 nights being sustained. And now he hears the Lord. Why are you here? Elijah? The voice says, and he says, I'm, I'm zealous for you, Lord, but they've destroyed your altars and they've murdered your prophets. And I alone remain. I don't know if you've ever felt that way. It, nobody else knows what I experience, you know, the pain that I have, and maybe you feel like you're alone, but Elijah truly is alone because all of the other prophets around him have been slain by this Jezebel. And then the Lord says to go to the mountain, you know, in the midst of his cry, in the midst of his throwing up his hands, I'm at my last, I'm at my wits end. Elijah still follows the Lord and still trusts in the Lord, even though all odds are against him in his own mind. But when we Cease thinking from the mind of ourselves and and look at the mind of Christ. Look at the mind of the Lord. And so then the Lord challenges him to go out to the mountain and, and that the Lord will pass by. Elijah has a very intimate experience with the Lord. And he goes out and we, and this is the beautiful, I'll read it. This is Elijah again in uh, 1 Kings 19. The Lord says, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will pass by. There was a strong and violent wind rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, a silent sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, why are you here, Elijah? I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, said Elijah, but the Israelites have forsaken your covenant. And he goes on and the Lord says, go back. The Lord says, go back. Go. 
go on mission. What do we hear after we receive the word of God? We're fed by the word and the Eucharist. It's not just the Eucharist. Don't check out at the first part of the liturgy of the mass. We are fed by that holy word of God right there. First and second Kings, we're fed by these stories. We're fed by the writings of St. Paul. We're fed by the gospel proclaiming who Jesus is and that we are invited to be those, uh, those daughters and sons to receive eternal life. And so now that we've received the word, which nourishes us, it gives us counsel, it gives us strength, it gives us direction, it defines who we are, it defines our identity, then we can prepare to receive. Just like Elijah, he was standing there in this cave and the Lord passed by him. I don't know what that looked like, but that had to have been remarkable, something we can't even imagine. And yet he heard in the quiet, the still voice. And what was it? An invitation to go on mission, to keep going, Elijah, you're not done yet. And if we would keep reading, we would see that the Lord points out three others that are going to be anointed to continue on the mission. And one of them will be Elisha, which we hear about Elisha, getting the double portions from Elijah, really from God. But there's a mission there's a mission to go do your work. We're not all fleeing from Jezebel, but we are living in a culture that reflects Jezebel and false gods and false worship, and even the false, false worship of a god like Moloch, who asks you to sacrifice your children. Our country and many countries have followed really following the deity of Molech. Sacrifice your children, kill them, destroy your bodies, destroy women's bodies so that they can't have children. We have a culture that is been fed evil and that is following the invitation of Satan because Satan doesn't want our souls to go to heaven. That was the message of the collect today that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you promised. This is where we want to go. This is where we have to focus. And Satan does not want us to go there. Does not want us to go there. We need to remember that and to follow the mission. Guess what? The journey of this life, which leads us to one of two places, heaven or hell. There's no in-between. You will either be received into heaven or because you have turned away and because you choose to be away from God, you will be in everlasting hell, everlasting life without God. You will choose that or your life and, and you will choose Christ, which is eternal life. But that journey we can't do on our own. If we think we can just, if we think that all the people of all the centuries of all time can just live their life and at the end of their life get to heaven, we got another thing coming. We need God's love. We need God's grace. We need God's life in us, which is why the gospel of John chapter six is so critical. What Jesus is telling us in the gospel. Let me open it up again. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Jesus says, whoever eats this bread will live forever. Whoever eats this bread and the bread that I give is my flesh. It is in Jesus Christ. It is in the Eucharist. It is in the baptism. It is in belief in Jesus Christ. It's in following Jesus Christ. It is detaching from all other things but Jesus for the life of the world. And so if we want eternal life, we need to receive that gift we need to ask for that grace. We need to let go of all those other false gods with a little G. And we need to be with Jesus in the Eucharist. We need to be with Jesus in the quiet. 
We need to look at our lives and look at where there is noise and dissension and division and get rid of it, get out of it, come into and follow the angel like Elijah did. We've got to walk those 40 days and 40 nights being nourished by the Eucharist. And we are on mission. We're mission. We're on mission for our own souls. And we're on the mission for other souls, souls for Christ. Vivo Cristo Rey. Vivo Cristo Rey. We're on the mission for souls for Christ. To Jesus through Mary. Mary will be that guide for us, will lead us into the scriptures. That's why we pray the rosary. The rosary leads us into the scriptures, into the life of Jesus Christ, into his mission, which isn't just his mission. It isn't just the mission of the first 12 apostles, and that's it. It isn't just the mission of my pastor or the Pope or all the bishops. It's a mission for each and every believer in Jesus Christ. So let's continue to go forth and be united with Christ and to continue to eat his body, his blood, soul, and divinity, and to share that good news with others. May Christ's life be with you always.